This lecture, the Winnipeg General Strike, focuses on labor issues following World War I. Post-World War I life. Soldiers returned home expecting to have a stable job. After all, they had just fought for their country. However, there were few jobs as industries shifted from wartime production to peacetime production. Inflation, also known as the cost of living, had risen, but not wages. As a result, housing was very expensive. Working conditions. The workplace was very different in comparison to the standards of today. No unemployment insurance or compensation existed for injuries, and no pensions existed. Unions had limited bargaining power. Those who were part of unions could be fired if they went on strike. Ultimately, little could be done to improve workplace safety conditions and wages. The strike begins. Many immigrants had settled in Winnipeg and were unhappy with working conditions. On May 1, 1919, the Building and Metal Trades Councils in Winnipeg voted to strike. They asked for decent wages, an eight-hour workday, most people worked 12 to 14 hours a day, and the right to bargain for better working conditions. The strike continues. Soon 30,000 other workers in Winnipeg joined the strike and sympathy strikes occurred in cities across the country. The strike then spread from industry to industry, from dairies, bakeries, streetcar operators to garbage collectors. Soon Winnipeg was shut down. There were two main sides during the strike. The Central Strike Committee was made up of those leaders who started the strike and all the workers who supported the strike. The Citizens Committee of 1000 was made up of those who were against the strike, including management and the government. The government responds. The strike dragged on until June of 1919. Some workers who had used up their resources returned to their jobs. The federal government then sent in troops to control the situation. Mounties raided the home of union leaders and arrested them. Quite often, if the leaders of a strike can be arrested, the movement will fall apart. This was the hope of the government and management. Bloody Saturday. On June 21, 37 days after the strike began, the mayor of Winnipeg read the riot act to those still on strike. This meant the crowd must disperse or risk being imprisoned for a very long time. The crowd began to riot and the Mounties charged the crowd and fired shots. Unfortunately, 30 were injured and one was killed. Five days later, the strike came to an end. Results of the strike. Number one, strikers lost savings and even their jobs in many cases. Number two, increased the division between employees and employers, also known as management. Number three, government placed restrictions on unions. They feared a communist uprising similar to what occurred in Russia in 1917. Number four, the strike made people realize how important workers were to cities. Number five, labor leaders entered politics to improve working conditions. J.S. Woodsworth helped to start the Socialist Party, the CCF, which would later be renamed the NDP.